Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Series Week 8. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and I'm joined with the Google Frog. Hello. And we are into the Losers Quarterfinals, as the winner's bracket has been pretty much completed. We're just waiting on the Grand Finals. Now we're going to be starting out with Dying Throne versus Ted McFred. And already getting some map bands going. We have our, our perennial favorite, Frosty Cove, has been banned. Along with Fallendale, the other perennial favorite. CCR gone as well. And Firebreak is the last one banned. It leaves Baron Intersection and Shimmer Shore for a Ted McFred to pick between. Knowing Ted, I have no idea what they're going for. Probably Intersection, because they're they're heavy into tanks, but that's the only one I can think of that would be remotely useful for tanks. Dying Friend saying Aqua Break, which could be Fire It's Fire Break. There's Shimmer memeing. Shore. They're memeing. I see. Oh, what? Oh, okay. I'm just going to do Band to One. Oh, whatever. Uh, No, that goes down to... Oh, no, you're right. That is Band to One. Oh, well, they'll they'll figure out the map in a approximately correct oh, way. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Dying Friend's on it. Rules. Okay, good. Thank you, Dying Friend. Yeah, unfortunately, the rules had to change because they were too confusing last week. They were so confusing that Crow, the tournament organizer, didn't know how to work them out when they were playing. So, yeah, that was... That was a thing that happened. So I think he will see Intersection. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Maybe having um, Intersection, Baron, and Shimmer Shore. I would expect choices. That. So, yeah, because again, Tamek Fred is a tank specialist. Baron doesn't have enough resources. Shimmer Shore doesn't support land units. So, Intersection is about the only one left. Nope, we're going for Shimmer Shore. Okay. Bit of a surprise. asking his opponent what Dying Friend is worse at. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, sure, why not? Shimmer Shore. Let's go for it. Let's get some chips in there. I mean, it turned out to be a reasonably strong map last week in 2v2, so we'll see how it works in 1v1. Certainly yeah, an open There map. might be less to it in 1v1. You generally want to start off with ships. Yeah. Although in before Ted McFred puts tanks on one of them center islands and then uses that along the giant is the giant semi underwater isthmus between them. Hmm. Uses uh, tanky welders to terraform the map. <laughs> Oh, wait, they only have four build power, don't they? Builders? No, they're seven and a half. They're oh! Heavy constructors. I guess it's just. Oh, right. It's only wasps that have four build. Or cranes that have four build power. Wasps is more than five. Cranes don't have four build power anymore. That's right. I think crane might be five now. So, is it just. I forget. It's just constables then? Nah, constables are five. Okay, this, then I guess everything's normal this five. stuff was simplified slightly. Okay. Crane can have other nerfs. Yeah, Crane's got five build power. Oh, okay. I don't know, I forgot this. It's like, I just... There's all these different things and all these different changes. It's like... It's yeah, one... it costs 200. Crane is five build power, but costs 200. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. Problem. So nothing has only four build power, apparently. Can't think of anything that would. Mariner 7.5... Oh, Recon Commander has eight. That's about as weird as you get. That's a new change, though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay. But the rest of it probably has been for a while. I just... I don't know. It's the one downside of casting this game for the better part of a decade is that after a while I start getting mixed up about what exactly is the changes that have happened. Yep. Yeah. Well, Hunter and Cutter pass each other. Yep, two ships passing in the middle of the day. But Ted McFred knows that there is a cutter around trying to get in there, and another hunter coming down. And the answer, I think, is no. The hunter hunter beats cutter. Especially when the second disarm missile misses. Yeah, cutter wants to be swarmed. 
to disarm things and then yep. eke out some damage. Hunter, on the other hand, is happy to just sort of hang out. Okay, this should be... Yeah, this is going to be Democrat again. I think the cutter ran into the commander. That could have been used better, disarming a marina. Get a constructor out of the way. I agree, but so it goes. And at the same time, Hunter didn't manage to actually kill anything other than another Hunter and a cutter. So not, not, the, not inefficient. They pretty much broke even. Temic ready able to take advantage of that, though, to continue to expand. Actually, very, very quickly expanding. So with that, Ted McFred is solidly able to get their economy going, solidly able to get a military force up. I'm liking it. Hey, and they got a hunter patrolling around with the mariner. That is... That is necessary. Yeah, although with the massive range of cutter... Vision range is more of a scout ship than a combat ship. That's you can sort of that's a hunter, vision though. contain your opponent to know all the raiders that might be coming after you. Oh, you mean from Dime Find? Ah, Ted Minute will either player you could do that. At oh this right, point. but Ted's been building nothing but hunters. Yeah, but Ted has got the naked expansion. Right. Although he's rectifying that with a urchin down the south at the moment. I mean, it's very risky. Everyone's content to make boats and expansion of them for now which is okay i mean ted mcfred is definitely getting away with a lot more although oof that's a disarmed ship that is a dead ship. what the that is a bad cutter disarming its fellow cutter like that still worked out but that was close turned out in the end turned out in the end okay now ted mcfred needs to turn his expansion into army. Well, they're working on it. They're certainly working on the harassment side. Ooh, well, it got rid of... Oh, for crying out loud, it did it again? I didn't even switch over to game first. Ah! I am terribly sorry. I wish there was a way of automating this better, but as far as I'm aware, there isn't. Making all the mistakes today. Getting the wrong thing, getting the wrong name at the bottom, having the wrong... Yeah, the delay's initial. quite long, so it is tricky. Well, it's not just the delay, it's that there are technically automated ways for some games to show it when you switch over to the game, but the problem is that I'm always having 0k open on one monitor, so I don't want to switch the game automatically. Yep. Unless... Well, actually, I suppose it kind of might, maybe? I don't know. Well, there's some escalation. We have Corsair coming in. On the bottom. There we go. The oh, and apparently people are gifting subs around. That that's nice of them. All right. Dinefrine is not really making energy. That will be a problem. Too confused by whatever's going on in the sea. Oh, yeah, that was a problem when they were playing against Randy earlier in intersection. Dimethrine just seems to be very, very conservative when it comes to building power plants. In fact, I think it could be some rust. It could be. That's true. They haven't played in a while. I'm trying to remember if they were build power plants as a rule before. I seem to recall before they were also pretty. St they they tend to be stingy with power plants. Okay. Anyway, uh, Ted and Fred quite happy with hunters. Yep. They are beating my urchins, though, as the raider, a raider. At well, least. they are, but the urchin doesn't have enough range to stop them from taking out these metal extractors. Ooh, on the other hand, the hunters do. Not quite able to take out more than one metal extractor. The title gen's not nothing, yeah, but that's a bit of it. reclaim, a few wins killed. Corsairs on the right has so far gone through three urchins, hitting the end of its abilities to do that with its health. Right, but there's so many, so much undefended. Ted McFred simply can't really contest that right now. Same time over the north side, we have cutters, hunters going and taking out Ted McFred's expansions that way. Dimethroid is. They are really clawing back that economy game. Ted McFred still going hard on the hunters. I'm not sure why they're so keen on hunters. Getting some Mistral. 
That's true. That's good. Which might be the most niche ship. Because you can work in a pinch against a, a big heavy ship like a Siren is its best foe. Yeah, I think they're thinking Corsair being a riot ship is the thing to take out with the Skirmisher. Right, well, Corsair is sort of the everything you'd ever want ship. Right, and also a it's very fast. Assault Raider. Yeah, and it's also fast enough that Which, there's not a whole lot the Skirm can do against it. Well, a Mistral will do something. I mean, you're not wrong. It's just it's hard to really get it in a position where you need it to be. Though, admittedly, it could and it will, push territory. It will take out urchins as well. So if you really want to go with hunters, but don't want to deal with urchins. It's true, but it's just not working out. The Mistral simply are fast enough. That's the problem. They can't support the hunters. Ted McFred not keeping the units all together. Using that control move. Well, not using the control move is the problem. Oh, wow. Every single missile missed. Yeah, Corsair is a bit maneuverable for this. Yeah, really? Now he's getting some subs. Yeah, Seawolf. That's the thing subs you want to use against so Corsairs. Good. good against Corsairs. Quite weak to Hunters, though. Hunters hunt subs. Yeah, well. Oh, yeah, there's the natural <laughs> kill off the Corsair there. It did something. Now it's killing off urchins. It did something else. There is certainly something to it. Yeah, well, it's dead now, but it did something. Its brief existence was not so in vain. is generally more powerful. It's like... Mistral's like a beady recluse that shoots rogue shots. Except in recluse patterns. Yeah. A recluse of rogues. That is the collective noun for what Mistral does. That's a first for me, but I can see where you're taking from. Hey, lots of Seawolf now. Uh huh. Ted. I don't know if I agree. There's a lot. Dime Throne is already prepped with the Hunters. And there aren't any Corsairs to stop the Hunters. Those Seawolves are basically he dead. Has. Yeah, they're not going to last very long. Although, actually, no, never mind. Just the numbers. No, if, you have, if you have more Seawolves than your opponent has Hunters, you'll do pretty well. It's just that Seawolves are over twice as expensive. Yeah, well, it's working out. At least and partially. And they're pretty bad against Urchin. A lone Urchin, they can assault and do okay. Well, it appears that Ted McFred is well aware of that, but unfortunately doesn't have a lot of support forces to actually make that happen. Doesn't quite have the space to make that happen, yeah. And it looks like Ted McFred... I'd expect this to, lo to lose against three. Oh, there's no way it would help. It would work, but I think Ted McFred is starting to get a bit desperate. They're they're losing the economy game. Their sea wolves are kind of doing okay, but starting to run into real problems against the hunters. Especially the hunter splash. Yeah. And there it goes. Not the worst thing, but Ted... It seems to be mm. going on in the theory that Corsair is no good, but I think Corsair is what you want to do when it's fairly open. I don't... Yeah, Corsair I don't is know. sort of the main push and assault. And all the things that beat Corsair are problems you have to deal with, so you can go back to making Corsair. Yeah, it's just Corsair Hunter or Corsair Seawolf, and there you go, you're safe. Yeah. Although then later on, if the sea gets heavier and more built up, you go more into envoys. Yeah, well, siren. yeah, to get rid of the sirens or to push, but... Looks but like while there's some openings, while there's some urchins to push down, Corsair is pretty good. Well, at any rate, Tammy Fred decided to go straight to the Siren part of the game. Probably a bit too soon, honestly, having just lost all their power structures and a decent chunk of their metal, but then again, they got plenty of spare. I'll have a bunch of Reclaim now. That too, yeah. And if you make enough Corsair in a burst, sorry, enough Siren in a burst, you can defeat uh, Corsairs like that. That being said, Dimefroin... Actually, Dimefroin mostly Hunters and Corsairs. I'd really want him to, hmm. to repair his Sirens, though. This is the kind of thing that requires... Well, he's got the energy. Yeah, I don't know. With some Constructors for repair. I would expect they would. They're a tank specialist. They, I would think they would be thinking in terms of wanting to... Like, their muscle memory would be to repair heavy units as they're damaged. Yep. But I don't There's see... There's nowhere it. to bury Caretakers, though. Uh, that's true, the Caretakers yeah. are out in the open. I mean, you could terraform the rest of the ground to meet them. 
Yeah, let's put them on a spike that uh, ships can't reach. Yep, that too. Ooh, Timmy First Commander in an awkward position. Luckily for them, torpedoes can't usually reach a land. And yes, I said usually. That's the operative word there. Seems to be out of range. Yep. And... Well, if they're happy with this battle, Dianfroon loses this commander battle. Forced to retreat. But he's decided not to do it. Recon commander always getting to decide when battles are over. Yep. Which is most of the time, because it can't win them. Oh, well, that being said, that, that just bought time. Action. That's all it did. Bought time for the rest of the forces to get in here. Dying first commander forced back onto the island they don't want to be. Yep. Seawolves could take them out. They could. He's got to just lounge out on the beach where he can't be shot at, but can't be shot at by the Seawolves. Uh, working on it. It's... Oh, Dying Frozen's going into the hovers. Oh, yeah. There's Claymores! Some Finally, more. someone built Claymores! Just wonder when that would happen. Entire 2v2 tournament last week, I was complaining about people not building oh, Claymores. No. Tepic Fred, what are you doing with your commander? There goes Tepic Fred. Yeah, the Claymores can just come on land and kill them. Or more that he's tangled with a Corsair. Uh, that too. Yeah, no. It, 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 two bad moves. Okay, Oop, almost died to the mist. Nope, they're dead. Nope. No, okay. He didn't move away fast enough. Yeah, if they'd moved away, they'd been fine. It was close, but they'd been fine. Wow, those Claymores really got improved since the last time I saw them. Like, in terms of reliability. They're not yeah, amusingly they killing themselves. To do something now. Yeah, because before the last time I saw them, they were uh, just killing the themselves. Land's coming in. The lands may deal with this assault. No, it's 1,000 damage. Or, sorry, 3,000 damage. Wait. Yeah, Tempo Fred's just moving all the units into the base now. He's spread everything out. Well, if they can break... I mean, they broke through the Urchin Wall. Not a whole lot else stopping them. It did, but it's a defense in depth type thing. True. Claymore's the main defense after that, and then after that is the Lance. Two Siren still, but Corsair is pretty good against Siren. A bit yeah. of an anti heavy as well. It's with his shotgun. Trying. Siren's certainly getting some value. Unfortunately. Not dealing with the real threats, and the Claymore should be able to finish it off. Ah, well, that's caused the friendly fire, but that's about it. That Siren... That's a lot of Reclaim now. Yeah, that Siren kind of wasted. The with the Reclaim is... The Reclaim is higher in the sea. Not for any special reason, but just because the wrecks sink and don't get run over. Mm -hmm. And destroyed. So you actually end up with more Reclaim than you'd expect. Oh, here's the Commander could go down. Possibly. Yeah, that's Commander's done. Dying for trying to get away, but they can't quite manage. Siren's still going to have a problem actually getting rid of these Claymores, though. And this is why I was hoping people would build Claymores last week. Because they are awesome. Especially against Sirens. We've been given that. I don't know if the Siren's not going to be able to break through everything that Dying has built over the south side of the map. Same time, though, Corsairs and Cutters trying to take out stuff over the north side of the map. Yeah, good raiding force. A very strong raiding force. Force is coming to stop them. The Corsair, or the Siren over the south. Not able to do a whole lot in response. Claymore is just stopping them. Yeah, all that reclaim has been turned into Claymores. Oh, yeah, very efficiently taken, too. It's like 2,000 metal, and now it's gone down to 200 and basically done. Which is saying a lot, because Dynthrone actually has an economic disadvantage when it comes to the metal extractors. They've just been winning on reclaim. Yeah, that's what happens when you push into your opponent's side like that without a follow-up. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to take some ground. Well, that seems to be the exact problem. And now, Ted McFred on the back foot, waiting for the assault force to come at them, and... What can they do? Oh, they don't even know. They have no idea this is all going to come out of them. They have no radar whatsoever. You can suspect it, though. Oh, yeah, we can suspect it. Sending it. That's true. Oh, they don't try to clear out the raid stuff down the bottom and then hold on a skeleton crew in the middle. I don't think a skeleton crew can hold it. No, I, just, I agree. Two lances. 
The Siren's gonna go down in two shots to the Lances. Well, one shot now. Yeah, this is a six and a half thousand army. Needs more than just a few ships. Well, tactical retreat from Temicred. Same time, that raid is still going strong. So clearly the strategy is forcing Dying Throne to go back or lose everything. And Dying Throne seems to be thinking, no, I can just win off this. So that's what it's getting him yeah. down to. Can Dying Throne win off this? The answer looks likely. I think it'll come down to how aggressive Dying Throne is. His army costs about six times that of what he's facing up there. I know, but at the same time, well, I don't know if Dying Throne's going to lose their on. nerve in actually assaulting this base. That is the question. That it's is, a good solid army, though. It is a good solid Very army, but it's starting to get... It's getting broken, and it's routing! It... Or at least, it's retreating somewhat tactically, but it is at least routed enough that Tevnik Red doesn't have to worry about their main base being destroyed quite yet. Thanks. Ah, Dying Friends become worried about the three sirens. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. The, the, the force is routed. They've been Drawing forced to retreat, come all back. all of the Claymore. Well, almost all. Well, that's the job. That's what Cyrus needed to do. Ted has to build up something in the, on the north side if he wants to displace this army. Yeah, well, so far, Hunter Siren, Hunter Mistral, and some Corsair occasionally. Ah, no, the Sirens, they just gotta go in. They just gotta go in hard. Don't even stop. Just try to take out everything. That's all you can do with these things. This is a suicide mission. And Tender Fred seems to have accepted that. Yep, taking out wind is not all that bad. I can't use your play without energy. Indeed, they can't, and that does at least cut them down to the point where the reclaim is now plus 15, but basically Tad McFred maintains an economic advantage. Oh, Mistral take, took out a lance just now. Nice. But Got there it. are two other lances. It's true, but at the very least... Yes, use this space to build up some army. Yeah. For an assault instead of going in. Well, Tad McFred does have the economic yeah. advantage, so they could theoretically do that, and the attrition is about even. And, like you said, Dying Throne doesn't have enough energy to use their reclaim. So they're capped. Trying to get some Seawolf, but no, the claim was returned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the logic was with the Seawolves there. I mean, honestly, I don't know what I'd well, take at this point. To take Corsairs? out the Lances, surely. Ah, uh, that's true, that's anger. true, yeah. Still, for the cost, though, Corsairs are going to be more effective. I think. I'm actually not 100 sure. I think Corsairs might have trouble attacking into a very large number of claymores. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what would work. I guess, uh, Hunters, maybe. Hunters seems to be just. Mistral's been money. working. Mistral has. That's been true. Them off. Yeah, Mistral has been an option. Though I can they see the value of Hunter here. Slow. Getting rid of this Sea Wolf force, but it's just oh, it's too too late. I think. No, Tempting Friend maintaining. No, they're maintaining. They still have power. They still have production capacity. They still have their metal. Yeah, but they have no position and no army. That's true. And that counts for a lot. Just come in here and hit the factory. Yeah, this looks to be it. Hunters coming in one at a time to try their best, but it's just not working. The lance has gone in position. That factory is dead in the next lance fire wave. And there... Ooh, not quite. Got rid of one of the claymores instead. Yeah. Alright, well, factory is down. That is it. Dying Frame wanted to know why his lances don't shoot through other land, through the claymores that are blocking the way. Apparently. Oh, well, because the claymores are blocking the way. Yeah. Oh, that's looking to maybe be game, though Temic Fred is still holding on. I mean, granted, they'll be eliminated in the tournament if they lose, but I don't see a way back. But apparently Temic He's Fred trying does. trying gunships. Yep, they're trying gunships. I don't know how long it's going to last. The fusion plant's down. That's a decent chunk of energy gone. Though, they're still doing well with overdrive. And that siren in the back is actually doing a lot of work. It's gotten rid well, of several. Marine is going to get disarmed, so the, the gunship factory will not get constructed. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it'll even be killed now. Okay, I think I think that'll be it. Yeah, claim we're on the surface. Gets rid of that gunship factory, and that'll be that. Siren in the back won't be enough to stop this. Valiant effort on Tempic Fred's part, but this game is over, I'm afraid.
whatever economic advantage they have, whatever they could use to build up from, it is gone. They're one mariner not doing anything, and they don't have the metal really to do it with. But, I don't know. Siren, lone siren base trade. That's That seems to be the plan. It doesn't appear to be a very solid plan, though, as the siren has just died, and that... Okay, Tamifred has got nothing. I don't know what they're waiting for. Oh! They were trying it? Nope, they've, they've thrown in the towel. Okay, they were trying it again, but they decided it's not worth it. And that is going to be that. Okay, and at the same time, Pudis ended up winning against Bloa. So we're going to be moving on to the loser semifinals. Dime throwing against Pudis. I gotta say about this game, though, it's... Temic Fred really... They got they had a really strong chance early on and just sort of fell apart. I mean if you look at yeah. Ted's army here with Well Ted's army, I mean they were doing really well army wise until they lost a bunch of sirens. Basically until the point where they ran into the claim wars and died. No, that was kind they of didn't the... use the efficiency of um Corsair earlier on. They did not. They absolutely did not. Went for heavy armies that got sort of out of position. Yeah, that, that worked out for time though. They knew exactly what to do to deal with it as it came to their base. So, good job then. They're now moving on to fight against Pudis. So we see the bracket. We see that... Well, it will be. Once it gets updated. Yeah, Dimefreund beats Ted McFred. And there we go. Buddhist against Dimefreund. That is our loser semifinals. So I'm expecting... I still expect Dimefreund will have a really good shot at this, just because it is... I mean, they're still probably the stronger player. Though admittedly, Buddhist did beat Bloa, and Bloa's all... Bloa has been up and coming. So for the first week, not bad. Unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with Pudis' play. I think we saw them... Did we see them earlier? Yeah, we saw them try, try a cheese strat against Golda. That knocked them to losers. I'm curious how that's going to work out between them and Dimefreund. Depends on the map. I kind of doubt they're going to go for that same cheese strat, but... Maybe. What was it? Dimefreund Pudis? Okay, Pudis is here. Yep. They're just waiting around. There we go. Not sure where Ted's going off to, but they have unfortunately for them been eliminated this week. <laughs> okay, so we are going to the map band stage. Buddhist gets first ban and or wait, no. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah, they get first man. They're lower seed. So, I don't... Man, I don't know if we're going to see Shimmer Shore again. It's going to be Pudis' pick, so... Firebreak is out! Seriously, I don't think we're ever going to see Firebreak here. I mean, you mentioned before, it's a very swingy map, so it's not entirely... Unlikely, but still. Sheesh. I don't think it's going to be in there next next week in the pool. And Fallendell is out. And Dimefreund is memeing. As they always do. Intersection also out. No surprises there. Could be Comet. Could be Comet, actually. That would he bans it next. Well, I mean, Pudis gets to choose, so they don't have to. They don't have to pick Comet. Ah, yes. They might not want to, honestly. They don't have to pick it. Yep. Time front, however, gets the ban before Pudis gets to pick. Hmm. 
and I'm throwing bands oh, Baron. So CCR is indeed a possibility. Though I would not advise Buddhists to go Most for that. Band Baron. Frosty Cove and Baron are quite similar. They are. Baron is more open. You can go everywhere. You can go up and down the hills. Yeah, but there's way less money. Baron with bots. Way, way less and money. A bit, yeah. A bit leaner. Sure. I think I'd pick Frosty Cove here. Seeing the Dying Friend. Same. Does not want that kind of map. Yeah, because CCR, honestly, unless you're the stronger player, don't go for CCR. You need to be able to play like 100 metal per second macro game if you want to be able to play CCR. And get into the 100 metal per second macro game within 5 to 10 minutes. It is it is the most macro oriented map in any 1v1 pool for 0k. Yeah. And Dying Front should be okay there. Yeah, Dying Front would just take it, no problem. Frosty Cove. If he will. Eh, it yeah. depends. Frosty Cove, I could see it going a bit more in Pudis' favor. Shimmer Shore, I don't know how strong Pudis is on C. But CCR would be a bad choice. And what? Okay, oh, no. Interesting. No, no. Nah, nah. Brutus makes the bad the choice. Brutus playing recently. I'm not sure if it's a bad choice. It is an interesting one, though. Well, it's a risky one. Dimefroind is certainly going to have that advantage on macro skill. Hmm. Well, it depends. Depends whether he remembers to make energy. Right. Maybe yeah. he's lost macro skill. That's true. That's very true. If you don't remember to make energy, you're but done. It is a map where you... If, you're, if your ability to expand is different, you can sort of not need to know how the units work precisely. CCR, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Precise um, notions of units working particular ways. No, just make a Ravager Ball. Important. Just make a Ravager Ball and go. You'll win. You'll have like three dozen Ravagers. You'll win. I'm not joking. Actually, to be fair, Ravager has been adjusted since, so like since CCR was a map in the pool, so maybe that's changed. I just have my doubts. But maybe I am overly cynical. Prudus, Rovers. Yep. Well, they're thinking classic. Come and catch up. Yep, they're thinking Ravager Ball. Time Freund, on the other hand... No, there's there's three steps. There's three steps before you get to Ravage Ball. And I don't even know if you do Ravage Ball anymore. It's not 2012 anymore. Oh, yeah. Well, CCR hasn't been a map that's been played regularly since 2012, so, yeah. Other factories and units exist. The classic is you expand with Masons, make some Scorchers, get a Fusion... Keep expanding and then make some big army, which could be Ravages, could be something else. Yeah, I've seen Claws actually used for that, but usually it's Ravager Ripper. Although back in the day, you'd, the starter in the corners, there was no box across the bottom. Oh, okay, I that predates me. Now, the, the vertical the... horizontal start boxes were a thing when I started playing. Yeah, that might even be worth changing for 1v1. Just restricts to the corner. Makes the game more predictable in a sense. Right, because you, you could spawn in any of these spots along the side and any yeah. of the expansion clusters, and it's just actually kinda of And you expand from a particular side. Yeah. So you know what's going on. Although Potus and Dime for and going for what is kind of a typical opening where you can just expand along both sides simultaneously. It's most economical. Potus is not going for any expansion. Well, except for his star location, of course. Yeah, but the start location enables the expansion where they go for it. Dime front, on the other hand, same start location, but is actually going for the expansion. Well, opposite, but not the same. Oh, yeah, this you're right. It's radially symmetric. But you're right, so Dime front. Center. Yeah, Dime front starting where is effectively here. Good. Or actually here. A bit of raiding, trying to convince the other to make a Lotus. Yep. Ow, oh, that rating is working out, though. Lotus quarter built. Should go down. Scorcher goes down as well. Uh, Lotus. Ah, but Brutus needs to be making things behind this. This is a map where you need to just have a big repeat queue and a big queue of places to expand to. You can't yeah. mess around with a single raider. Well, you can. Well, you. yeah, it's not going to last long, though. 
Although, no, in fact, uh, you might go out Well, down. yeah, there's no defenses. Uh, the fact we won't go down before the Scorpion. Recon no, no will. They can jump in, though. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the Recon Commander is coming in, but I don't see it being able to get in by line of sight. Pudis yeah, on the line of behind. sight play. Taken out the factory two minutes into the game. That, that is a rock. And Pudis takes it. Pudis moves on to the loser's finals. <laughs> wow. I have never seen a CCR game that short. I can't believe that worked. See, <laughs> I guess it's hard to do when cheese fails because that wasn't cheese. That was a single raider. Yeah. It was just a single raider played really well. Especially, like yeah. I said, abusing line of sight, or not abusing, like, taking advantage of line of sight like that. Stopping the commander from doing anything. Oh, that was brilliant. That was, yeah, that was amazing play. just sneaking around the factory, but having to stay in range so it deals a, a maximum damage. Oh. And that Scorcher coming out very much putting it on the clock. Yes, it did, but it... I, I, but I like that Pudis, they had the right judgment, though. They knew that that Scorcher wouldn't be out in yeah. time before the factory went down. And the fact you're going down is pretty good. Oh, yeah. No, that, itself. I mean, that won them. I mean, Dying Throne pretty much figured, well, there's no way I can push back. Granted, they probably could have because Plutus had very little built, but Dying Throne had no way of knowing that. So I can yeah, see why Dying Throne threw in the towel. Dying Throne had a constructor out already. Yep. No, Dying Throne could have easily rebuilt. Plutus would have been able, wouldn't have been able to totally hold that. But still, that's a huge blow. That's 700 metal to rebuild a factory. And for all Dying Throne, I know Plutus had like a dozen metal extractors. So. Yeah, that was, that was a really strong, I can't, well, there it goes. Well, that was a, oh, man, never thought I'd see a CCR game end in two minutes, but there we go. Anyhow, that's going to be the losers semifinals. Now we're going to be moving on to losers finals where Pudis goes against Randy and we'll see what Pudis does there because so far Pudis has made a name for themselves in this tournament as being the cheese player or just the. Super strong micro player who wins despite yeah. only playing like a, a one one hundredth of the game. Oh man! Well, anyway, that was that was mercifully short. So we're gonna be moving on to the losers finals where. Pudis and Randy are going to be going at it. Because oh wait, shoot, I just remembered. I had a solution to this problem. It's called put OBS on the other monitor. So I can see it more easily. Okay. Yep. It's like I have three monitors. I don't know why I have OBS on the far side of one of my monitors. Put it on the close side. Okay. Okay, there goes Firebreak. Yep, we are. There goes Shimmer Shaw. Yeah, no surprises there. So, beyond that, we have still two more map bans. Pudis. Man, they're going to ban CCR. I don't think. I mean, they might go for CCR one more time because they get the pick again. But Randy will probably build a Lotus in their base and prevent that. And Randy bans Baron. Yeah, oh, interception. Randy's an old reckless CCR player. Yeah, they are. I don't think CCR would work if Pudis goes for it. And they might do it again. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if Pudis goes for it, but I just don't expect that, honestly. If Pudis goes for that, I... I, I that, that's, that is, to me, a mistake. That strikes me as an error. Nope, they're going. It. Okay, okay, they're doing it again. I mean, they just they tipped their hand is what they're planning on doing. Randy saw every minute of that, all two of them, so they know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, we'll have to see some better expansion from Pudas this time, I think. Yeah, I think what'll end up happening is that Pudas will probably. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Like, Pudas is. Probably okay. I don't know. Could he just make a Scorcher Rush, maybe? That would be a cheese if you... Well, I guess that was almost a cheese. Pudis had no constructors. 
no constructors on Comet is pretty unusual. I mean, that was, yeah, they were basically going for, I'm either going to win on factory kill off this Scorcher, maybe win off the next three Scorchers coming in and dealing damage, or it's over. Oops. But he wasn't streaming Scorchers in, he was expanding and yeah. doing those kinds of things. That's true. Like a half-hearted cheese, maybe. Which turned out to work very well. All right. Well, that's... Is that Avbots? Well, they are okay against Scorchers. Yep. Uh... I feel like they... Oh, okay. Prudus is just going all economy. Huh. Well, I guess that... Kind of makes sense, though. Amphbot? Why Amphbot? They haven't had the speed to work in this map very well. I guess just, like, a big, hard push. Maybe. Well, the con charm is not nothing. That's true. That's true. Against raids. That... Well, I feel like if Randy sees Amphbot, he's going to make nothing but Mason. Yeah. I don't know. We will have to see. Well, with that, Randy has just okay. They're going pretty hard in economy as well. Yeah, the one dart, the one Mason, and they're just building up energy. Randy waiting to see what happens. He's done this sneaky Mason off to the side to get radar. Oh yeah, cleverly done. Well, risky. Could get caught by a scout. Could be, but wasn't, so it worked out. If scouts existed. You mean if Pudis decided to go for... What did they even go for? I mean, yeah. they couldn't really build anything in time. Amphibot didn't really have a scout unit. Sparrow's quite good. Yeah, but Sparrow's right. 200 metal. Yes. It's actually 270 metal because of the morph cost and everything. Or 285 metal. Yeah. This is why I'm told not to do my stream. Oh, yeah, right. The base one's 55. You're right. But yeah, Wait, 280 metal. Yes, 290. Anyway, yeah, so still, that's three Although ducks. not a bad choice if you're going to raid. True. You've got a, ha a handful of ducks and you want to figure out where to send them. Very true. Splitting them up and sending them to three places is probably worse than finding where to send them. Although he's trying to do that cheaply with a single duck. It's going to work too. It should, anyway. Oh, no! It. Oh, my goodness! Oh, that is... That hurts. Randy went just far enough. It. Yep. Randy knew exactly where to go so that Pudis wouldn't actually scout them out off a lone duck. I don't think Randy's even aware how close they were to being scouted out and probably blown to pieces. Well, there was the radar. Although, I guess he couldn't quite see the vision of the enemy duck. It would be a bit weird. Yeah. At any rate, Pudis now running into a similar problem that they made for Dimethroind. So they themselves are expanding a little bit. They have a couple conches. A conch, sorry. They have one conch. Single duck does not feed a Scorcher. Nope. So that's the trouble here. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised we're not seeing Pudis archers. Pudis is pushing in really deep. I think they think there's no way of getting through this without just pushing in hard. To be fair, Randy's expanded a lot. They haven't invested a lot into army, so Pudis does have a timing attack opportunity. It's very narrow, and it might have actually already passed, but that what have we got? is it. 600 in ducks against 1,000 in scorches. Uh, no, the, the, the time has passed. Never mind. They missed the timing window. How slow, how long it takes to get across this map, you know, even with Scorcher. I don't know if there is a time. Although he is building some economy behind it. Yep. Just having a staging point is good. Although this commander might go down. This is a lot of scorches. Oh, that's and more than enough to kill the commander. The no, that commander's raid. dead. That is, oh, that bad move. I'm sorry, Pudis. Say goodbye to your commander. Yeah, it's a question of whether Randy wanted to take that trade. Because he now has no scorches left. Yeah, and there are ducks still on the map. And the expansions have been scattered out. But I think Pudis is just so concerned about killing off Randy's base. Possibly getting yeah, revenge for the commander. Brutus is playing a game of fighting armies. Right? You, know, you really want to be fighting expansions and making your own expansions. Yeah, again, I don't know why Brutus went for this map. 
Like, it's just... They have been playing this entire game as if it's a tactics game. Like you said, fighting armies. I don't know what... I don't know how, they, though. I mean, I figured, you know, they're... They're... What is that? The super giant ranking? Like, you'd have to be decent at macro to get a super giant rating. So, Comet's sign in the pool. The biggest That's true. recently is on Tago, and it's pretty lean in terms of metal. That is true. It's like 30 per side. So... There's not much... There isn't much opportunity to learn the danger of just letting someone have a mason go off doing its own thing for five minutes. Well, apparently Pudis has learned to respect that, seeing as they are finaling over that mason. Well, he's picking it off, maybe? Oh, no, no, they want to the expansion about the fences. Well, looks like they're just trying to go, get rid of the metal charges instead, and that might be a good idea. I mean, that's not nothing. Not killing the mason, though, does mean it's not worth much. Yeah, there is a point when you can kill off a few metal extractors, but they get rebuilt because there's masons everywhere. And we are pretty much at and that what point. What really needs is behind this, he could have had three conches just wandering around, making his side of the map. Instead, we've got this large economic disparity. Yeah, that's that's comic catcher for you. If you don't know how to play the map, if you don't know how to expand like three ways at the same time, you cannot play comic catcher well. And that's what Putus learned. So congratulations for getting as far as you did, though. I mean, that was that was third place. They haven't been playing the tournament at all, and they just roll in here and pick up third place against. I mean, Dimefrain. Granted, that was also kind of a bit of a cheese trap. Oops, didn't want to do that. Yeah, he's going for the long shots. I, I mean, it's worked out. Yeah, I can't. I can't fault them for that. I can't. Can't argue with the results that way. So well done. But now we are going to be... Now we are back to... Randy and Gorda. And three match is... I would expect to see Comet Catcher in three matches. Oh, yeah, probably. That'll actually be a full-blown Comet Catcher game, just because that's how it goes. When you have players that good. And that's got to have a theory. Because Randy Randy's quite happy to play Rovers, whereas Gotti might go, oh, can fleas right. take the whole side? There are things you can do with fleas. That's true. Like cloaking, well, not cloaking, but borrowing walls of fleas. You know, to ambush raiders. Oh, can I should probably, hang on, I need, to, I need to do the break thing for YouTube. One sec. Sorry. Brief break, we'll be back in a sec.